Today, we're gonna talk about how to prevent and handle all of us DJ's worst fear, an empty dance floor. What's up people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today we're gonna tackle the age old question, what do you do when you have an empty dance floor? What do you do when nobody dances? You're playing dance music and the floor is empty. And it is the most, I mean, if you've been there, it's the most awkward, weird, terrible feeling in the world. It's anxiety ridden, it's stressful, it's all the things. Now when it comes to the science of making people dance, there's no real written down science. It's just something that we kind of figure out along the years of doing this for a long time and whatnot. But I wanna break this down so it's just a perspective that everybody can kind of understand and grasp on, whether you're a brand new DJ, or you've been DJing a while, you know? To do this effectively, I wanna talk about this in two parts, right? First, we're gonna talk about prevention, and then we're gonna talk about actually handling the situation of having an empty dance floor. So let's start with prevention. The first step of that is preparing your ass off. DJing weddings is 75% preparation, 25% execution. It is what it is, okay? The more you prep, the better off you're gonna be when it comes to weddings because there's so many different variables. Every crowd is different. It's the most diverse crowd you'll ever DJ in front of in your entire life, like every single time. You know what I mean? You just have to prepare. And in order to prepare properly, you have to ask your couple the right questions before the wedding even happens, in your final meetings. And if you don't meet with your couples before the wedding, like you're just goofy, I'm not even gonna explain to you why you should, it's like common sense, like snap out of it, stop it, okay, stop it. Meet with your fucking couples before the wedding. When you meet with your couples, you have to extract valuable information from them. Some couples give it up right away. When you meet with a couple, sometimes they're outroverts and they're just like, yep, yep, this is how my family is, this is what I want, these are the songs I want, this is who's gonna be there, this everything. They just tell you everything right up front and I'm just sitting there taking notes the whole time. Other couples are more introvert, right? They kind of just, no, we trust you, just do your thing, and I'm totally down to do my thing, and I like doing my thing, don't get me wrong, but so many DJs make the mistake of taking that advice and then just running with it. Oh, okay, no problem, yeah, I'll do my thing, cool. Don't need to ask no more questions. Of course you do. You still need to know how to do your thing. Like, you don't wanna figure that shit out the day of. So you still have to ask those crucial questions that are gonna give you intel on what you're in for the day of. Are you two dancers? Is your family dancers? Are your friends dancers? Do you guys party? Are you more low key? What's the whole vibe of the actual wedding? What music do you listen to on the daily? What music does your family listen to? What music did you and your friends grow up listening to? What gets you to dance? When's the last time you danced? What were you dancing to? Where were you at? Where did you like to go out back in the day? Did you go out back in the day? Oh, you just stood home. You didn't do shit your whole life. You just sat in your room and just watched Wheel of Fortune, went to bed early, woke up early, had straight A's and never had a great time in your entire life. Is that the story? You see where I'm getting at though, right people? Because when you pry, you kind of ask the right questions when you're meeting with your couples. That's where you can get to the ultimate truth of whether or not they party, whether or not they're dancers. And knowing that is such a big advantage because you can prep the right way. And on top of that, just knowing that your couple said to your face that they're not expecting a lot of people to dance, that their family and friends aren't too big of a dancers or parties or whatever, that calms your anxiety, right? When it comes to the day of and you're having a little trouble getting people to dance, you're gonna value 10 people on the dance floor way more knowing that fact in your head. If you never ask those questions, you're gonna be stressing out that there's only 10 people on the dance floor. Oh my God, the dance floor's not packed. The bride and groom probably hate me. I gotta figure this out. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You you know what I mean? The second valuable piece of information you want to get out of them while asking all these questions is what kind of music they actually like. You know, what kind of music their family likes, what kind of music their friends like. And sometimes they're reluctant to tell you, especially if it's like off the wall stuff. If they're into indie or I don't know, metal or I don't know, anything that's like not pop and mainstream, a lot of couples don't wanna tell you that because they really don't want you to play that stuff at their wedding because they think it's not gonna work. So they'll hold this information back, but it's super valuable because number one, if you can play a lot of this stuff even during dinner, right? Or things that are in that realm, you know, you kind of get a feel if you're experienced, what, well, oh, you like this genre, I know stuff in that genre that everyone's really gonna know and that would still work. You can play that stuff during dinner, even during dancing as like a left turn or something like that, and really get these people into it. If you have a crowd that's anti-top 40, anti-pop, anti-radio, wedding hit stuff, and 
you don't know that, you're just gonna play the wedding hit stuff, they're not gonna dance, and you're gonna be having a heart attack. But if you know that ahead of time, and you prep them with a lot of stuff they like during dinner, right, so they're bopping all through dinner and just have a great vibe, they all had an extra drink, right, one extra drink than they're planning on, then later on for dancing, you still play pop stuff, you still play regular stuff, but you sandwich it in between with like, you know, some stuff that, you know, they'll like, you know? Throw the Mr. Brightside in there if they're into indie, right? That's a super top 40 song, but if they're into the indie side, you know they're gonna dance to Mr. Brightside, you know? So make sure you hit that set. Does this make sense? So I'm gonna say it one last time, and we're gonna move on, people. Preparation is key. Ask your questions, take your notes, cross your T's, dot your damn I's. Now, picture it, you're at the wedding. You started a dance set, however you start your dance sets. You started it and nobody's dancing. Nobody, not one single person on the dance floor. And I say not one because let's say on the flip side, you start your dance set and there's only two people on the dance floor, four people, right? At least a pair, not someone just by themselves because they'll never last, but at least a pair. So two people are dancing together, two or more, but not a lot of people. You just build upon that. The answer to that is whatever you're playing there, Keep it up and just put your head down and fucking mix. Mix your ass off and build that dance floor up. You got the first two people, two will turn to four, four will turn to eight, and then you build it up that way. Sometimes you just have to build a dance floor. It's just, it's part of it. As a DJ, you gotta remember one thing. You're not God, okay? So just because you said it's time to dance, that doesn't mean the dance floor is just gonna get packed right away every single time. That'll happen plenty of times, especially when you have a good crowd, you know, the kind of crowd matters, but, it's definitely not gonna happen every fucking time. You gotta sometimes build it up. So don't get discouraged if it's just a handful of people on the dance floor. Just put your head down and mix at that point. But with that being said, the topic of this video is zero people on the dance floor, right? So you started your dance set and there's not one single soul there. What do you do? In this situation, the first thing you wanna take into account before you make any drastic moves is the environment, okay? Is it early? Is it an early wedding? Is it an early event? Is it light outside? Is there a lot of windows where you're DJing? Can everybody see that it's light outside? Is it a nice day? Okay, are people outside? Are they chilling outside? What's the environment? What's going on with that? Another little note too, if you're doing a daytime wedding when you meet with your couple ahead of time, ask them what kind of environment they want at their wedding. Do you want it to be like a day party, like everyone raging, like just like regular, or did you want me to take it like a little more low key since it's in the afternoon? And ask them what they want, just so you know, because you definitely don't wanna like overdo a day wedding when they were looking for a certain vibe. Next thing you gotta check is your volume. Is it too loud? Is it too soft? Is it too piercing? Right? Are your highs too high? Do you not have enough subs? Are you one of those DJs that like only bring a sub if you pay for it in the super duper package? <laughs> bring a sub. Make your shit sound good no matter what. Good sound helps people to dance, okay? It really does. If it sounds really good in there, if it's the right volume and the right like just evenness of tones, like good low end, good mids, good highs, nothing's like hurting your ears, nothing sounds dissonant. Like an average person can tell when something sounds like shit, you know? So use decent speakers like RCF and keep your volume at the right volume, not too loud, not too soft an effective, nice, medium ground of volume, and bring a damn sub, okay? Your two tops are not enough. I don't care what tops you run. Two tops are not enough. And then the third thing to consider is, is there any drama going on? I can't tell you how many times I was like DJing at a wedding, right? And uh, you know, I had a dance floor or whatever, and I looked up and like all of a sudden half the people are gone. I'm like, oh my God, is this something I played? What did I play like? No, no, that should have worked, right? And I'm thinking in my head, what happened? I'm looking, 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 looking. Come to find out, a fight broke out, or an argument broke out, or someone's really, really drunk and like falling all over the place, you know what I mean? Any type of drama that happens, any type of like event like that, where like people are gonna wanna watch and gawk, you know, like like that old, uh, that, uh, what's that effect called when you're like driving down the road and there's a car accident and everybody slows down and looks at it, you know, so there's always traffic by a car accident when it doesn't have to be traffic, you could just blow by it, but everyone's got to look, right? One of those things. Same thing at a wedding. Anything happens at a wedding, people are gawking, people want to know what's up. So that could be a factor too. If nobody's dancing, maybe there's something going on there. So check it out. That way, if you know what's going on, if you are aware of your environment with all these aspects, then you can handle it accordingly, right? You don't want to like overdo it. You don't want to get desperate and start playing all these bombs and all these bangers and trying your hardest to get people to dance when it's really not going to happen because there's something serious going on. Aunt Sally fell, she broke her elbow, and uh, the ambulance is on the way. 
Now, after confirming that all those factors are good, right? Everything's good. None of those things we just talked about, none of the environmental factors are affecting your dance set to your knowledge. Now, take a deep breath. You got a tough crowd. <laughs> and listen, don't get down on yourself. Tough crowds are out there, okay? They're out there. I ran into one the other week, okay? It happens all the time. The good news is the majority of crowds aren't tough. The majority of crowds will dance. And you do have a solid, I would say, I don't know, 20% of crowds that like would dance to anything. I mean, your expert programming and mixing and expertise as a wedding DJ definitely helped that party go off like to a whole nother level. But you gotta admit that they would have danced to pretty much any, you could have put a Spotify playlist on, they would have danced, right? We all get those crowds. So just like we have that extreme of a great crowd that'll dance to anything, we also have the crowds that don't dance to nothing. So like I said earlier, there's no written science to this. So I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through my thought process when this happens, right? So I'm DJing, uh, let's say I invite everybody up for a slow dance, right? Only like seven couples come, first sign. I'm like, oh God, like, you know, I'm playing at last. This, this song's a shit. It's like one of the greatest songs of all time and I only have seven couples up here, uh-oh. And and the first thing in my head too is like, maybe I picked the wrong slow song. Maybe I should have played something newer if it's a younger crowd. That's a whole nother video though. Anyway. Seven couples on the dance floor. I play the first banger, right? We all start our dance floors up with a big banger, right? Yeah, by Usher, jump around, don't stop till you get enough. September, Uptown Funk, you know, one of those. Tried and true at thousands of weddings, but this time everyone leaves the dance floor, right? So my first thought is, okay, is my music good? Yeah, my music's good, volume's good, right? All the environmental factors, right? Good, 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 nothing weird's happening, okay, da, 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 da. How long do I have till cake, right? I kind of analyze, you know, what my dance portion is. Like if it's 9.30, we're cutting cake at 10. Oh my God, I got 30 minutes, right? This is a pretty long time. So in my head, I'm doing math. Okay, I could cut the cake early if the maitre d's cool with it as a worst case scenario, right? I'm kind of working out worst case scenarios. But with that formality coming up in 30 minutes, you know, it's really not an option to slow it down again. That would just be weird, you know what I mean? Because we're about to just switch it up with that. So I got to make it to that 30 minutes, if not just a little bit sooner, if I, uh, you know, end up doing it early. So that's my, so now I have the time laid out in my head. Everything like the whole, this whole dance set's laid out. I got to do something with this 20 minute minimum dance set, right? At that point, I put my head down and mix. Mentioned this earlier, but it's really the truth. I put my head down and I mix. I try and pretend that I have a full dance floor and I literally just mix like I have a full dance floor. I don't hold nothing back. I don't recommend holding anything back, right? Because you're holding stuff back, hoping someone will come and then you play the good stuff. Like, no, you need the good stuff to get people out there, right? So I'm just dropping bangers, right? I'm not on the mic a lot. That's not my personal style. Maybe you are, but I think that if you go on the mic too much in situations like this, people look and it's like, wow, this guy's getting desperate. He's got no dance floor. He's freaking out. You know, people understand, like people understand our job, <laughs> you know? So you don't want to look like that too. Because again, like who cares what people think? I definitely don't give a shit, but that can add into your anxiety. If you do get in your head, like, oh my God, they're looking at me. They know I suck or they think I suck or da 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 da. Like, you know what I mean? Like you don't want to get in your own head, right? So like you don't want to just, you just, you want to try and keep the anxiety at a minimum. But regardless, just keep telling yourself, all you can do is put your head down and mix in this situation. So you got your head down and you're mixing. You're playing Uptown Funk. That's not working. Everybody cleared the dance floor. Maybe it's played out. Maybe you need to go with something a little older. Maybe you got an older crowd. Respect, Aretha Franklin. Same BPM, right? Mix it into that. See if that works. If that doesn't work, then maybe go up to disco, okay? Maybe go up 10 years, boogie shoes, September by Earth, Wind & Fire or something. See if that works. If that doesn't work, go to Pitbull. Pitbull's proven, especially if you've got a white ass crowd. Play Pitbull, Cali Ocho, one, two, three, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, whatever. Low by Flow Rider. go with the basic stuff. See if they respond to that. If that doesn't work, maybe push it by Salt and Pepper. It's Tricky by Run DMC, go into the 90s stuff. Maybe go to Shout, right? Do what you gotta do. If you go to Shout, maybe go on the mic and say, listen, it's illegal. It's illegal to sit at your tables to Shout. It's illegal. Now, a lot of you might be saying, oh my God, this guy has nobody on the dance floor and then he's just playing all the hits, right? He's just playing all these hits. Like if you ever do pack the dance floor, what are you gonna play then? 
Well, the answer to that is, is there's millions of songs that came out in the world. And if you don't have stacked crates where you can do this, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you should have bangers on top of bangers, on top of bangers, on top of bangers, on top of bangers. You wanna see what's in my crates, check out the link in the bio. But um, yeah, you should just have bangers on bangers. You should be able to do this, no problem. So if you're not prepped in that aspect, get your ass prepped for that aspect. Anyway, as long as your transitions are smooth, and you keep going from one genre to the next, right? Maybe two songs in one genre, maybe one song in one genre, quick mix it, right? Play the best parts. You're gonna figure out what's gonna make them click. Eventually, somebody's gonna come out. It always happens. Somebody will come out, they're gonna realize, man, this guy's really playing some bangers, no one's dancing, this sucks. I'm gonna go out and be the first one, right? You're gonna get that person. You always, always will, don't worry. Don't worry. And then when they come out, right, you have that first one or two people build. Build. Put your head down and mix more. More. Whatever they came out to, whatever song you're playing when you got your first two people on the dance floor, play more of that shit and then slowly mix to other genres and ride the wave a lot slower, right? Slow down your wave riding at that point because you already got the two, now you have to build upon that. Now, in the very, very rare event where you're doing all the things I'm telling you and it doesn't work, not one single person comes to the dance floor and there's no environmental factors, nothing. It's just, it literally just, nobody dances. It's just, it's, it's, it's that bad, right? Well, then we enact our worst case scenario where we go to the meter D, hey, I'm having trouble getting these people to dance, I don't know what to do. Can we uh, move up cake a little bit so we can do cake, get some sugar in them, da da da. And a lot of times they'll accommodate you, you move the cake up early and then you switch it up with cake and whatnot. And when you do that too, then you let them down slower, right? So when you're mixing, you're playing those bangers, playing those bangers. When you get to a point where it's like 15 minutes in, it's like, all right, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, start letting them down slower. Like, don't just like bring it from like high to low. Just, you know, go from like a banger to like sort of a banger to like kind of a banger to like, oh, I forgot about that song, but I want to really dance to a banger and just bring it down that way, like more naturally, right? You know, just slowly, like just kind of bring down the tempo a little bit to like more vibey kind of like sing-along stuff. And yeah, and then that's another good point too. I said it out loud, like, I, you know, get into some sing-along stuff at that point too. See if they'll sing you know, certain songs, see if they'll bop their head at the seats, you know? A lot of people that don't dance in real life, like on a dance floor, will bop at their seats. They'll still bop. Everyone likes music, you know what I mean? Just a lot of people are self-conscious about dancing. So at least make that happen. And then if that works, if you're playing a particular sing-along song that works, then think of other songs in that realm for later. You know what I mean? Like you're always doing your homework. And I mean, all through dinner as well, you should be doing this. I mean, if you're not mixing your dinner sets, for all the same reasons why you mix during dancing, right? Ask yourself, why? Why do I mix? Why do I beat mix? Why do I mix program? Why do I, everything I do during dancing, why do I do that, right? For every single why you gave yourself, that is exactly why you should be mixing during dinner as well. Now in the event you didn't have cake, of course then you would slow it down after like 15, 20 minutes, you know, and then reset and try again, reset and try again, reset and try again. You just gotta keep stabbing at it. It's a part of our job, okay? It sucks, it might take two or three dance sets to actually get them dancing, but you gotta keep trying. And the effort is what matters as well. The effort is what your client is gonna look at, you know? You wanna make it look like you're putting out effort. You, you, you don't wanna, you just give up and then sit on your phone in the corner and just put it on autoplay because like that's where the client's gonna be like wow this guy sucks he doesn't even give a shit like he's just on his phone he's just he's playing whatever nobody's dancing my wedding sucks like you know you got to look like you're trying you can't give up at any point you know the, every wedding's a super bowl okay every wedding's a super bowl so you got to try to the bitter 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 end now when you reset and you go do your slow song and you start your dance floor up again you want to make sure you go out with the crowd when you're announcing the slow song you want to make sure you get eye contact with the people okay you gotta like kind of not get in their face but you gotta um it's like a psychological thing almost right i found that it really works when like you know i'm having I, I played my first slow song seven couples came out six couples came out and i was like this is whack right the next slow song you bet your ass i'm gonna have like santi play it and maybe loop the beginning or something i'm gonna take my wireless mic right and use it what it's meant to be used for and i'm gonna walk out into the crowd so any of our happy couples or any of our, so anybody, you came here with someone special, you're crashing the wedding, you just started dating today, you just met, shoot your shot, ask her, whatever, da da da, we need every single person on this dance floor. And I'm like, I'm like looking, like looking at everybody in the eyes, like in the eyes, like literally just eyeing them up. Come on out, come on out, da da da. Maybe use the couple, right? Use their name, Erica and Bob. 
you know, come on out, bless the dance floor for Eric and Bob, let's go, let's get this party started, da, da, da. you know what I mean? Like, that's when you do your MC and when you announce that slow song, right? Make the eye contact, make, you know, go out of your way to like, come on, come on, without being like, without acting desperate, right? You know, you find the fine line, it takes practice, but like, you'll find it. Because remember, that's doing two things. Number one, you're, Pushing people to dance, all right? And this is, again, these are last case scenarios. I don't, I don't ever do this unless like I really have a bad crowd, but like whatever, you're pushing people to dance. Come on, come on, come on. It's a wedding, da da da, right? So you're enticing people, people are gonna come out. They're gonna come out, like, it doesn't matter. Like they just will come out. All right, you're right, it is a wedding and you have been playing decent music, fuck it, I'll dance, right? The second thing you're doing is you're showing your couple that you care, that you're trying, that you're doing everything you can to get them to dance. Because if you do all this, and they still don't dance, right? And it's just the worst wedding ever. And you did everything you possibly could. You can walk away there with your chest out, right? With your head held high that you did everything you could. And honestly, it just, it was the crowd. It was just a tough crowd. I did everything I could to make it work. I did my job. And then also the couple will recognize that and not blame you, blame their crowd. Yeah, our crowd was lame. I can't tell you how many times a couple said that to me. Like, yo, I'm so sorry. Like. Crowd was lame, they didn't really dance, you know, da 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 da, you know, and, and that's it, you know, it, it, they understand and life is good. You're not getting a bad review, they're still happy with you and everything else. Sometimes that's really the situation, you know, it's not often, but sometimes that happens. That's it, people, that's my whole dance floor science master lesson. <laughs> I should do a seminar on this. I don't know. Like making this video was fun because I never really broke it down like out loud like this. I, don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If I missed anything, leave a comment in the comments. My show is live every Tuesday right here on YouTube at noon. And I go live on Twitch at 9.30 at night. So catch me live on those dates and whatnot. And any of the other videos I post, posting all the time, people. Subscribe, like, hit the bell, all that good stuff. I love you all.